Hey Sage. Yeah. Go turn the wheel to the right just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. The uh, the tire is stuck to the rim, so I got hit with a sledgehammer. But because it's a split rim and it's still aired up, I'm gonna go and let the air out of it all the way. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna get that valve out of the way. Right, this tire is a split rim, um, and it's stuck to the brake drum. I got hit with the sledgehammer to get it off, so I don't want any air. I don't want any air to be in it because I want it to blow up on us. So I'm just gonna let it out of it. I think there's a nut under that petrified grease. I also think it's been hit with the, uh, oh yeah, it's sharp. Oh, I can see chisel marks from here. Yep. Uh, I'll just take this real quick. Doesn't that look disgusting? There you go. No, I think it's clean again. Oh, you got it on yourself already? Yeah, that's why I asked for a rag. I thought you wanted a rag so you could get to the nut. Well, I don't care about that. I got gloves okay, on. I'm going to go get the socket for this. Okay. Uh, we can take bets if the socket's going to fit over it? No, I don't think it's going to, but we're going to try. Okay. Bring a chisel, too. I'm going to hammer. Pretty, pretty rough, what I do see. <laughs> How, nobody owned a socket who ever worked on this bus. Just perfect. Are they this destroyed when you start? Well, you can't get a socket on it, so. It looked like it was already loose. That is. West Virginia open all to the rescue. I liked it. What'd you call it the other day? Something nut stripper? Uh, oh, Swedish nut lathe? No. Oh, Swedish nut lathe. <laughs> you know where my nice ones? to go tight on that just to show me how loose it is it's very loose yeah the grease is very funky yeah it's, it's turned into two like a liquid and a liquid yeah. and a solid separately And it's 39 degrees outside this morning. So I was in the 30, low 30s last night. I'm surprised it is still in a liquid state at all. We need to dump some of that diesel fuel in, in the, a bucket. Um, just with. saying right now, I'm pretty sure this bearing's been spinning. You can feel the score marks on it. I feel the back of this sharp. Well, I could tell how loose it was or something. <laughs> so cute, this is about to have to get tapped off. It's hitting the end of the threads and it's a little messed up. You get it with a rag. Maybe. So those gloves are stopping you from getting a good grip. Oh, those gloves are stopping me from being here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see the circular wear pattern on there. What parts washer do you like to use? Um, just diesel in a in that? a bucket or something. So I can see, I mean I can see it. Homer bucket and some diesel. Yeah. <clears throat> a couple of these wiped off real quick. Nope, oh, hitting or anything. I can see a line straight through the center of every yeah, one I of see them. Some scoring on it. This one's got some nicks in it. They don't like to roll. Oh, that grease has turned into a yeah. glue. Well, about 20 miles down the road, it'll clear right up. Yeah. <clears throat> I can see a mark in it from here. In the center, yeah, there's a, right like, where two, two wear lines from over here. Does this just have a press in seal on the back? This has a very weird seal on the back. Is it bolted in or pressed in? No, it's well, it's pressed, it's pressed in, but it's a reverse facing seal. It, if I put the nut on here like I do everything else to rip a hub off, will it leave the? You inner should bearing? just be able to pull it right off. But that will leave the. 
if I put the nut on and catch it against the bearing, that'll leave the bearing, the seal, and everything on the shaft. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't? Just pull it off. Want some help? Nah, I'll get it. You want me to move that bucket down there? Yeah. It was catching all the rust. <laughs> it was catching all the rust. So it did leave the bearing on the seal. Is that what you were saying it was going to do? No. So if it's got a pressed in seal on the back that's kind of tight, you just leave the nut on the outside, pull it, the nut will catch the edge of this, and it'll keep all of it on there. It'll pull it out of the hub for you. wiper came off with it. But the wiper is in there in your hand right now. The big metal ring stuck in the middle of the seal. Oh. This? Yeah. yeah it ain't moving. Don't, don't don't break it because this is unattainable. This this thing will have to be reused. Okay. So I believe we just realized something that the hold my beer thing is probably second to hold my Mountain Dew. Yeah, I think I've <laughs> almost died more times where someone had to hold my Mountain Dew. <laughs> Young and stupid. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm that smart now, but it definitely was worse. <laughs> oh, this is pretty, huh? Hey, here's a do-it-yourself leaf spring building. <laughs> hey, you on there. So... These leaf springs oh, did you hear that? are shot. Yeah, it's different on this side. Um, they're broken down there in the bottom. The spring pack bolts are all gone. They're not going straight. There's spacing in between them. So this side needs to get replaced. All right. You ready for the real shit show part of this job to start? Pulling the trunnion? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so now is the part where we pull the motor mount off we wanted to get the bus wow. up and supported where it wasn't gonna have to move anymore um and we're gonna pull this all out over here and get it to a fab shop to get remade and then we got to reinstall it uh old bolts steel and aluminum together Holding up a 3,000 pound engine. This is gonna be exciting. All right. I don't remember if this is day two or day three of trying to get this thing off of here. Three. <laughs> no, two. I don't think we worked on this one for day one. No. I, I do have it moving now, so hopefully the, the coil and then it's been sitting all night with the PB blaster on it. Hopefully we'll get it, get it off in short order here. Tyler has plenty of video of me yesterday pounding on this with a hammer. So we decided to be extra safe because everyone keeps telling me I'm going to die a horrible death grinding. So I've got safety glasses on so I can't see what I'm doing. And then I've got earplugs for hearing protection, but they're actually headphones so I have music on so loud that I can't listen to anyone yelling at me that I'm doing something wrong. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, watch your foot, Tyler. Hang on. Don't move your leg. What about my foot in? You, you, move, you move the bag and then you almost went in a pile of grease. Yeah. Yeah, and then I need to get on the other side and hit the sledgehammer. That's going to come right off. I just put 
my foot in that shit. Ta-da. Oh. See, I whacked on it for half an hour. Lance, you, or, uh, <laughs> sorry, Scott, you probably have. I bet I had two hours in it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and this, I don't know why we didn't just do that because oh, we're taking it to get it welded anyways, you know? This, and then we can cover it up, but I figured. My foot went right in it, so. A second here tomorrow. We've pre-soaked our nuts with aerocoil. We're removing the trunnion. We've got everything pre-lubed, and then we've got the engine is supported at three points down there with jacks, so it shouldn't fall out. Fingers crossed. So we pulled that plate that was on here, and I expected to see a break back here, and that, that's what there is. It's completely fractured. So we're just gonna keep going and figure out what do we gotta get to. There is steel behind there, so I'm not sure if the steel is broken too. It's just the aluminum that cracked maybe, um, but we're gonna tear into it and remove all this. We got to see what's behind there and then figure out our game plan as how we're going to replace it or restructure it to hold this engine in the bus. Because that, again, that's the mount that holds the engine in. It's not pretty. And it's been attempted to have been fixed several times before. So even this is a temporary repair and um, we got to get rid of all these temporary repairs to get back down to what's original and then try to fix it right. Well, staying true to form, it's fighting us like crazy. This bolt, I got the nuts off the back side of it. The bolt would not turn, with, even with no nuts on it. Stripped out, rounded out, couldn't get it. Cut the head off of it. Can't pound it out. Heated it with the oxyacetylene torch around it. Uh, sprayed it with coil. Uh, I didn't already say cut the head of it off. Pounded it. I got it moving just a little bit, but that's aluminum, dissimilar metal corrosion stuff. It just, oh my goodness. And this is number one bolt. Some of these are gonna be really hard to get to. We got a fight in front of us. Oh, there are. There's a hole drilled right there, and I thought that hole was the bolt. I thought you had knocked it in already. No. I am kind of blind from the last time I did this, so that's, that's the excuse I'm sticking with. I mean, really, I hope it's a hole right next to the hole that I thought you were knocking the bolt through. No, just, just heat around the bolt. I always I hear about it. 50 complaints. You're supposed to heat around it, not the bolt. I can heat next to it, it's still gonna hit it with fire. I'm not that expert at keeping the bolts cold while doing this hot. What I can do is really make it mad though and just immediately spray it with oil after I get it going cherry red. See what I'm doing?
Okay, why don't we try to knock it out now? Hi. It's pretty green copper burning. Spray it with PB. I'm gonna let you hit it off with the camera. Hammer. I don't remember where I sat the punch. Am I standing on it again? No. Don't play like where's Waldo with everyone. Do you guys see a punch? First one to uh, it. find it in the comments. We'll get a little heart. Oh, it was under the bus. Whatever you do, don't get your hand near the trunnion because it's hot. This is the whole engine mount, the rear side of it that holds it together. And as you can see at the top, all the rivets are pulled out. So I'm not really sure what was hold how it was being held in place because there's nothing there to hold it. It's 100% out of the ceiling. On the wall there, there's a couple of rivets that are still in it. You'll see from the other side, I think there's four rivets holding it in. There is steel, but the steel goes to that aluminum that attaches to the wall. And then it comes back here to this side where they added a few bolts to it. But yeah, there's nothing holding it on the rear side. That plate that we took off was holding it in the front and that's where it's hanging down there. That's the rear side of the trunnion, if that makes sense to you. This is the that part. So we're gonna take this all off and figure out how to reattach, rebolt everything to the top, uh, reattach it to the back wall, to the bulkhead, and then reattach it out here as well. I, we'll be able to fix it, but it's just gonna take a little bit of work. Pulling the motor mount out of the trunnion. Hoping that we have the engine pretty neutral balanced in there right now. We got jacks under it. It's coming out pretty good. Don't let your finger get pinched and the thing comes down. <laughs> Sorry. That looks tight. <laughs> at least it's tight at the top, not at the bottom. So we've got it raised up a little too high. We did pretty good. That, that engine just wiggled in there and that didn't touch it at all. Yep, yeah, we're good. It's free, man. Okay, where, what are you banging just, on? I was trying to hit, using this pin to knock one of those bolts up. Right there? Yeah. Yeah, that's a motor mount. Did you see it wiggling? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Oh, engine just moved. <laughs> just a little. It's free though. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Scott, how many hours was that to uh, get us to where we are right now? Most of the day today. Yeah. Guess what? Grab it. Ta-da! Ta that, is... that is some nasty looking... That was holding the engine on. Barely. That was barely holding your engine on. <laughs> this came off undamaged. <laughs> Got a few studs to extract over there. Six broken ones. That is definitely broken all the way through because the crack. I guess it's not. It's just severely cracked. So are we gonna fab that or are we gonna We're gonna get that, that fixed and then we're gonna fab this with something new and pretty and strong that attaches it good at both ends. We're gonna remove that whole thing and start over. Cause it's not attached at the back. It's all disconnected. Wiggle, try and wiggle it a little bit. No, you can't really wiggle it, but it's not, it's only got a couple little rivets back there that are holding it that are very small, tiny rivets. Here, I'm gonna just give it a, a little
careful that bumper doesn't fall on your foot. Yeah. Because the bumper is attached to that right now. Okay. Because they've welded the bumper to this, which is up to here. That's all it's holding that up. But back there, all those rivets are gone, except for a couple. So what, he's got three rivets at the top? Four rivets? No. Yeah, four rivets up there. And no rivets on the bottom? One rivet. And then whatever's on that back wall on this side is actually still attached, but the other side, they're all disintegrated. We're gonna have this thing beefed up nice. We're, we're, the way we're doing it is the proper repair. Yeah. <laughs> well, good.